Hallelujah. What does it mean for something to be in provision? Uh, the theme is abundant. So I'm focus on Christ for abundant word provision. When you said when we say provision, it's a state of being prepared beforehand. <laughs> A measure taken beforehand to deal with a need or contingency. You see, God has made the provision already. He said, I have come that you may have life what? in abundance. Meaning, as you are on earth, as you are living on earth with the, with the challenges or the different challenges, God has come that you may have what? A satisfying life. God is aware of everything. So he had made provision what before what hand. So provision before what hand. A measure taking beforehand. As a Christian, you are a heir of what? Abundance. A heir of God. God is an God is a God of abundance. So you are a heir of abundance, meaning you have inherited. God has given to you that abundance. You are an heir of God. Everything God has, every the, everything the Father has belongs to you. Praise the Lord. We'll see that in Psalm 24, verse 1. We're laying down the foundation. Everything God has, he has given to you, his child. Everything he has. Psalm 24, verse 1. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord. And the fullness, what? thereof the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof the english standard version says the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell in it god has it our father has it god has it in abundance praise the lord praise the lord and so today i want to dwell on something very it pertains to us, I mean, as we're living on earth. So people will say, yes, God has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. That scripture is very straight. Everything that pertains unto what? Life. And everything that pertains unto what? Godliness. God has given to us. And some people will say, so why do I experience A and B? Why do I experience this challenge? Why, why, why don't I see in quotes, the abundance of resources available to me. Pastor said something on Sunday. He said, why people don't um, unless, or well, let me put it this way, why people don't get most times what God has given to them, because they what, lack what? Knowledge. They lack what? Knowledge. Once you know what God has given to you, the next thing to do is lay hold on it and receive it. And begin to what? Act on it. And so that is what I want to dwell on today. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be talking about God's abundant provision of ideas. Praise the Lord. God has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. God has given to us every you see every resource we need in life every resource we need on earth has been given to us and you're here and you say ah but i have not experienced it today you experience god's wonderful resource and you will tap into it in the name of jesus so god's abundant provision of ideas let's look into a scripture genesis 30 We'll be looking at this scripture and we'll be breaking it down and see what God's provision is all about. I love this scripture because it's so profound. A, a, a lot of people, when, when we read it, they will see themselves in this shoe. G Genesis 30 from verse 25, talking about how Jacob's wealth increased. It's a, this is an example of abundant word provision by God. I'll read from verse 25. It says, soon, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, soon after Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban. Now, if you read the story before, um, Jacob was working for who? Laban. 
Laban, who is Laban? His father-in-law. Jacob was working for him. And um, he was working, I mean, Jacob worked to get married and he was deceived and gave him some more. He still worked again. I mean, Jacob had been working with Laban for years. This is a normal thing. If, if you are working, you get tired. You want something more. Okay? So if you are like Jacob, you want something more. You've been in a particular situation for a long time. You want something more. You want to progress in life. You are, we are saying, ah, where is this abundant provision? I want God's blessings on my life as an individual. This is Jacob. Jacob was in that shoe. So Jacob said to Laban, please release me. At this time, he said, please release me so I can go home to my country. Let me take my wives and children. For I have earned them by serving you. Now, because of time, I can't. But if you want to really go back to verse 20, just go back to read that story. How Jacob landed in this issue. He said, for I have earned them by serving you. We all agree, if you have read the story, that Jacob served. Jacob served, literally served. And let me be on my way. You certainly know how hard I have worked for you. Verse 27. Then Laban said, please listen to me, Laban replied. Laban actually recognized that Jacob, because of him, Jacob was blessed. Laban said, I have become wealthy for the Lord has blessed me because of you. Tell me how much I owe you, whatever it is, and I will pay. <laughs> and Jacob replied, you know how hard I've worked for you and how your flocks and herds have grown under my care. You have little indeed before I came. Jacob understood who he was. Even though he was in a very tight situation in the, in the care of Laban, because he was working for Laban, he understood that God has given unto him everything that pertains to life. He understood. He said, I have worked for you and everything under my care, you have increased. He said, you have little before I came, but your wealth has increased enormously and the Lord has blessed, tr blessed you through everything I have done. Jacob recognized that he is a carrier of God's blessings. Jacob recognized that in, because of him, Laban was blessed. But there was a challenge. You are here. You, I mean, you've been hearing and you have read. Let's assume you've read that you are a carrier of God's blessing. That you, I mean, in you, God has given unto you all things that pertain to life and godliness. God, uh, the life of Zoe is in you. But you, not, you are not seeing it physically in your own life. So there's a challenge. Jacob wanted to leave. So that, okay, maybe if I leave here, I will experience what God is talking about in my life. But see this. After all, if you, have, if you have been a blessing to someone, you want to leave, you expect the, bless, the person to let you go, right? But we have seen how it happens. He said, verse, I mean, verse 20, 30. He said, you had little before I came, but your wealth has increased enormously. The Lord has blessed you through everything I have done. But now, what about me? Somebody say, what about me? What about what? Me. I know a lot of people are asking those questions. What about me? God, what about me? When can I start providing for my own family? So Laban, Laban said in verse 31, what wages do you want? Laban asked again. Jacob replied, don't give me anything. Just do this one thing. And I will continue to tend and watch over your flocks. What is this one thing? He said, let me inspect your flocks today and remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled or spotted. Along with all the black sheep, give these to me as my wages. In the future, when you check on the animals you have given me as my wages, you will see that I have been honest. You will find in my flock any, if you find in my flock 
any goats without speckles or spots or any sheep that are not black, you will know that I have stolen them from you. What did Jacob say? And you see, at this time, Jacob was walking under the instruction of God. Praise the Lord. Abundant provision. God had given unto him an idea. We'll get there. And, but the, the, the story is that now, Jacob was telling Laban, Let me, I want to tend to your sheep. My wages will be the spotted animals. The sheep or the goats. The spotted one. Now, at that time, there were little spotted animals with Laban. So, and they were more of the, 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 the clean and, um, sp and unspotted ones. That's the white, correct ones. So, Jacob told Laban, he said, give me the spotted animals as my wages. Any animal that is clear and white, take it as yours. So, Laban, with man's wisdom, look at what he did. <laughs> Verse 34. Laban said, all right. He said, Laban replied, it will be as you say. But what happened? But that very day, Laban went out and removed the male goats that were strict and spotted. All the female goats that were speckled and spotted or had white patches. And all the black sheep, he placed them in the care of his sons. And look at what they did. Who took them what? Three day journey away from where Jacob was. Meaning, Laban said, ah, okay. Because Laban wanted Jacob to stay with him longer. He wanted, and Laban, and Laban wanted to have more of the um, prophets. Let me use that word prophets. So that when the sheep or the goats mate, they will, they will mate the, the white animals and he will have more. So he took all the ones that had the tendency physically. Physically. Man sees physically, but God, God sees. God has given you unto you all things that pertains to life. God works in the spiritual. So Laban took all the spotted, I mean, you could see it with his physical eyes. Any spotted goat, any spotted ram, any spotted sheep, he took it away. Bible said three day journey. He gave his son, take it away. So that there is no day. Excuse me. There's no day the, the sheep will mistakenly get back to the farmland. Do you understand? To, to mate with other animals. So Laban thought he was very tactical about it. Laban thought he was very smart about it. But one thing I would like us to know, I'm talking about abundant what? Provision of ideas. One thing that I want us to know is that God has given unto you the power to make wealth. Is in you. It's not in the place or the location. It's not in a favorable condition, so to say. Or you feel you're here. You feel, ah, I, I, I just want that job in that oil company. Your wealth or your success is not based on that oil company. It's based, it's in you. Praise the Lord. So when Laban took everything physically that would have made Jacob successful, Laban felt, oh, let's see, Jacob will be here. I will have a lot of the sheep. Jacob will have a little. But see what happened. Verse 37. It says, then Jacob took some fresh branches. Now Jacob was walking under the instruction of God. This, I mean, a lot of scientists have tried to understand what happened here. A lot of them have been confused. A lot of, they are wondering, this is God's word, provision. When God gives a provision, most times people cannot understand. It's spiritual. The Bible says the things of the spirit are foolishness unto the carnal man. It's a spiritual thing. The theme is focus. You know, most times people take the abundant provision and leave the focus on Christ Bible says keep looking unto Jesus you are looking unto Jesus you are looking on his word you are looking unto him for direction as he leads you he begins to direct and instruct you Bible says focus on Christ for abundant provision that's what um, our, our, our bishop 
um, that's the thing she gave to us. So you focus. How do you focus on Christ? Keep looking at him. The Bible says he is the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep looking at, uh, on, onto his word. Keep looking onto his word. Keep looking on, on, on Christ. Praise the Lord. He said, then what happened? Then Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar almond plain tr and plain trees and peeled off stripes of back making white stripes on them. Then he placed these peeled branches in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. For that was where they mated. Meaning what he did, he peeled the, as instructed by God, the stripes and he kept them where the flocks would come and um, mate. They were mating at, on, um, on that spot. Praise the Lord. He said, and when they mated in front of the white striped branches, they gave birth to young that were striped. Meaning, let me break down the English. Young, they gave birth to babies. They gave birth to their kind that were spotted. Now, let me tell you, the animals that came to meet or mates that came to that spot, they were white animals. There were no spots on them. Laba made sure he took the spotted ones away. But the Bible says, when they came to mate there, the Bible says, as they mate, they gave birth to animals that were what? Spotted. Talk about abundant provision, someone. Someone say abundant provision. Say abundant provision. So as the animals gave birth to the spotted and striked and speckled ones, Jacob began to separate them. Why? Because that was his word, wages. Yes, that was his agreement. He said, Jacob separated those lambs from Laban's flock. And at mating time, he turned the flock to face Laban's animals that were streaked or black. This is how he built his own flock instead of increasing Laban's. Verse 41. Whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob would place the peeled branches in the watering troughs in front of them. Then they would mate in front of the branches. But he didn't do this for the weaker ones. So the weaker lambs became, belonged to Laban and the stronger ones were Jacob. As a result, what happened? Jacob became very wealthy with large flocks of sheep and goats, female and male servants, and many camels and donkey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are talking about God's divine provision. God gives ideas, bright ideas. Praise the Lord. You're here, you're wondering how you can sail through from one state to another, looking unto Jesus. Focus on him. He will give you direction. He will lead you. He will give you instruction. You have, you have all in you. I put that. I say every resource needed or that is necessary for life or for your business or for your career or for your home to thrive if is made available. I'll repeat it. Every resource, everything you need. You may not see it physically. God says he has given unto you all things that pertain to life and godliness. You're going through, begin to prophesy. You say, Father, I thank you because you've given unto me all things that pertain to life. That is, he has given unto you all the resource you need that is necessary for life. Everything. Whatever it is, God has given unto you. That is necessary for life to thrive. God has given it unto you. Let's look at another scripture. Psalm 65 verse 9 to 12. We have a great God. We have an, a God that supplies all our needs according to his riches. Christ Jesus. 65 from verse 9. Hallelujah. Talking about, the scripture is talking about who our God is. Verse 9. Are we there? 
Okay. He said, Thou visited the earth and does what watereth it. Thou, gent- thou greatly enriched it with the, with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast so provided for it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. This is God talking about the natural things in life. God makes provision for them. How about you? That is but a small thing before the eyes of God. Praise the Lord. He said, thou settlest the pharaohs thereof. Thou maketh it soft and showers. Thou blessed the spring thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of what? The, they drop upon the pastures of the wilderness. I want to read from the New Living Translation. From verse 9. You see, you take care of the earth and water it. Making it rich and fertile. That is our God. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain. For you have ordered, ordered it what? So. You drench the plowed ground with rain. Melting the clouds and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless the abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathway overflow with what? Abundance. The grassland of the wilderness become a lush pasture. And the hillside blossom with joy. Hallelujah. The meadows are clotted with flocks of sheep. And the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. That is your God. Praise the Lord. He has provided abundantly. The Bible said the earth is the Lord and the world fullness thereof. You are here listening today and you are wondering, oh, how can God, oh, I mean, this situation, how can God provide for me? God, he has made all things available for you. Just continue to look into his word. Look, 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 feed on God's word. And as you feed on God's word and act on it, you begin to see it, um, you begin to see answers or it replicates in your life. If God had given Jacob that instruction to um, carve the plants, put it in. If Jacob had not done it, he wouldn't have had the spotted animals. Praise the Lord. If God had given Jacob that idea and he had not done it. As you're listening to me, you have prayed. You have read the scripture. And God has given you one idea. That thing. He has instructed you to do A. Z. But you are still sitting down there because you don't understand it. Because in your mind, you have tried to multiply it and say, oh, so how will this thing uh, um, resolve to plenty? It is not your business. It is God's business. If you see in this, as you see in this Jacob story, there was an exponential increase. Great increase beyond man's imagination. I'm sure Laban was so shocked. I'm sure Laban would have said, how? I'm sure Laban would have even sent his son. Go and check those spotted animals. Are they still there? He would have said, yes, they're still there. But when God has provided for you abundantly, no man can stop it because it's in you. As you begin to do what God says do, the results will be shown in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is the God of the, he answers everything. He, God is the A to Z of all matters, meaning he is the alpha and the finisher of all matters. He knows everything, meaning he is the complete, completeness of that thought. God is the completeness of that thought. He's the one that brings the idea true. If God is, let me give you another, another, uh, another example. When the children of Israel were running away from the Egyptians and they got to a situation, ha, 
they got to a stage where in front was what? The Red Sea. At the back was what? The Egyptians. So they were in the middle of chaos. They, they needed God's help at that time. I'm sure in their mind they would have said, okay, make, let us just turn back. Let them just capture us. You, you understand? Because they will look at, this is Red Sea. How will we go through this Red Sea? So the ones that don't want to go back into punishment say, okay, let me just die in the, in the river. But as they, as they went, God, took, God gave an instruction. God said, just begin to go. Stretch forth your hand as they went. Bible say what? The Red Sea began to what? The, best, the Red Sea began to part. The Red Sea did not part before they got there. As they obeyed God. You see, God has provided already. In their own eyes, they were seeing the Red Sea. In their own eyes, they were seeing death. In their own eyes, they were seeing destruction. In their own eyes, they were seeing no way. In their own eyes, they said, it is not possible. But as they obeyed God, because God has given, it's already there. The provision for help is already there. Just obey God. As they obeyed God and walked, the Bible said the Red Sea began to what? Part. Oh, what a joyous ex experience. But the truth is, you cannot experience the abundance if you don't believe God's word and act on it. Praise the Lord. If you don't believe God's word and act on it. See, he has given unto you all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things. All things. He has given it to you. So what you just have to do is to receive it and thank him. He said, Father, I thank you. Because you've given unto me all things that pertain to life and godliness. And as you begin to look unto him, he'll begin to give you instructions on how it, you, you should go. Begin to give you ideas. Bible talks about the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things. That will guide you into all truths. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look unto Jesus, the altar and the finisher of our faith. God himself is the complete knowledge of everything in life. God himself. He's the complete knowledge of everything in life. And he says he has given unto you. He has given unto you all things that pertains to life and godliness. So my brother, my sister, if you are listening unto me, hold God's word and act on it. Because abundant provision is available for you today in the name of Jesus. Let's thank God for his word. Thank him because he has given unto you all things that pertain. Thank him because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the Bible talks about, the Bible says we are heirs of God. God has given unto us everything. Lacking nothing. We lack nothing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord as we pray. As we begin to thank God. I'll read Psalm 3 verse 10. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you. Mashukurubrati. Proverbs 3 verse 10, sorry. Mantus kreish kurubatis krahidaba. Father, I thank you because we are not alone. You've given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He said, as you hack into God's word, as you listen to him, he said, he will fill your bands and you, with grains and your vats will overflow with good wine, says God. Hallelujah. He says, he will fill. Proverbs 3.10. He says, your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine, says God. That is his word. Oh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. Oh, Rabbi Shekaridaba. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. The word of God says. Simple way how you I'll can from change your English language in your standard current. Version. So let's start. The first thing you want to do is just says, go to options right here and click on preferences. Thank you, Father. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless 
all the works of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll read the last scripture for today. Proverbs 12 verse 2. Oh, God is giving unto someone witty inventions. Oh, praise the Lord. Proverbs 12 verse 2. Thank you, Father. I'll read from the King, King James Version. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 2. The Bible says, A good man obtained favor of the Lord, but a, a wicked then, but a man of wicked general. devices general, will he what condemn. The New Living Translation says, the Lord approves, approves of those who are good, but he condemns those who plan, whose plan, but he condemns those who plan wickedness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will end with Deuteronomy 30 verse 9. I'm reading this scripture so that when you want to pray, you arm yourself with these scriptures and you begin to pray with them. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 30 Verse 9. Then, then the Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. He will give you many children and numerous livestock. And he will cause your field to produce abundant harvest for the lord will again delight in being good to you as he was to your ancestors say amen amen let's thank god for his word father we thank you lord jesus we thank you because you have given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness your word says the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you have come that we may have life and we may have it more in abundance. Your word says satisfying life. Father, we thank you for the life of abundance you've given unto us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your, as your children, you bless the work of our hands in the name of Jesus. Your word says you extend Establish the work of our hands. We thank you for witty inventions. Your word has said that we are blessed in our coming out and we are going our going in. Your word has said you will bless our flock. You bless our produce in the name of Jesus. I, I thank you, Father. I thank you for your abundant provision for your children in the name of Jesus. As we obey your word, as we continue to focus on Christ, we will continue to live in the abundance of your word in the name name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his word. It's time for us to give our offerings. Um, if you're watching online, you can look at the screen. The account numbers will be scrolling. Um, it's a good thing to get back to give. The Bible says it's more blessed to give. As you give unto God, you're giving for the work of the ministry. You're giving for the work for the ministry for the work to go on. And as you give your hand, your your seed will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Can we raise our offerings? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. I always call it an opportunity. It's an opportunity to give. Father, we thank you. Even as we give in your house, in your house, we thank you because the hand that give is blessed. We thank you for the work of our hands. Your word says, oh God, you will bless the work of our hands and we establish ye the work of our hands. Thank you for everyone that's giving, oh God. May our offerings be become raise up like a sweet smelling savour unto thee in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you're sitting in the office, can you drop your offerings in the basket? <laughs>